Aubrey Plaza, the actress. I don't know if she's as relevant now as she used to be. I've never cared for the pseudo-goth, scary, quirky girl celebrity marketing. I think her role now is being played by Jenna Ortega, someone I'm f***ing tired of hearing about. But Plaza recently leveraged her now more matured quirkiness for some government propaganda in favor of milk. The wood milk advertisement for the fictitious proxy of plant-based milks. The writing was a little lazy, but you could imagine that I agree with the message enough. Is wood milk real? <laughs> Absolutely not. Only real milk is real. Then what did I invest in? Naturally, vegans and their ilk didn't care for the ad. One of the most disturbing parts of the video to me is a part where Aubrey says, Here's how wood milk is born. Not born, exactly. More like squished into a slime that's legal to sell. The use of the word born here was pretty chilling to me. It's drawing attention to the fact that live birth is an integral part of the dairy industry's operations. Obviously in the dairy industry, a female cow is forcibly impregnated, followed by a nine month pregnancy, followed by the birth of a calf, followed by the calf being removed from her immediately in order for the humans to take the cow's milk that she is producing naturally for her calf. It was even alleged that the ad broke federal law, says a complaint by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. The PCRM, while not putting a possessive apostrophe after physicians, is in fact a committee, but they are not particularly responsible, concerned with medicine, or even that comprised of physicians. If you go to the leadership section of their website, you'll see a few MDs, but they're mostly into research or health coaching. The practicing physicians listed are mostly lich-esque figures who used to practice medicine and at a certain point became obsessed with veganism. One particularly terrifying looking figure on their board felt the need to biograph himself by telling the story of his heart attack and subsequent discovery of, quote, the health benefits of whole food, plant-based, low-fat nutrition for controlling chronic diseases. This is obviously meant to be his vegan road to Damascus moment. But to me, it feels more like a narcissist who's having discontentment with his own mortality. He had a heart attack and it spooked him. He didn't discover anything. Everyone knows you should eat your vegetables and probably whatever the hell a whole food is. He's just fetishistically taken on a militancy to it. Nevertheless, the complaint from the physician's committee is as thus. The wood milk campaign violates the statutory prohibition against advertising that is false or misleading or disparaging to another agricultural commodity and the regulatory prohibition against unfair or deceptive acts or practices with respect to the quality, value, or use of any competing product, the Physician Committee's complaint says. It also violates a federal law that says USDA milk advertising dollars can't be used to influence legislation or government action or policy. The USDA's Agricultural Marketing Service administers the federal commodity promotion and research programs, commonly referred to as checkoff programs. The USDA approves all checkoff advertising and is responsible for reviewing and verifying all nutritional claims. The Physician Committee's complaint requested the Office of Inspector General issue a recommendation that the wood milk ads stop and that the milk checkoff issue corrective advertising that explains the benefits of plant-based milks. The checkoff is a government program, said Physicians Committee President Neil Bernard. It is one thing for it to promote cow's milk. It is quite another thing to mock the products that many non-white Americans choose for health reasons. Okay, and that last sentence is particularly irksome. Again, there is, of course, a racial component to lactose intolerance, with non-whites typifying it. But nearly every time I see someone drinking oat milk, it's the archetypal uh, white woman at Starbucks. I'll concede that I don't have any figures to support me, but since white people be drinking milk, they tend to be the same ones looking to substitute it with fake milk. And it has nothing to do with race anyway. They've just tacked on the race card last minute. Also, if you go back to the PCRM leadership page, you'll find that 14 out of the 15 portraits are some of the whitest faces you'll ever see. Thank God we have these white saviors to advocate for the health choices of non-white Americans. But the physicians aren't the only ones calling milk racist. Andrea Freeman wrote a lovely essay called The Unbearable Whiteness of Milk, Food Oppression and the USDA. I'd love to read the whole thing, honestly, but here's a relevant passage. Lactose intolerance affects more African Americans and Latin A slash O's. Uh, by the way, j is, is a quick language lesson. Uh, you can just say Latinos. Uh, if you want to say Latin A slash O or whatever, 
If it's a singular person whose gender you don't know, knock yourself out, I guess. But in the plural, uh, the masculine plural, plural represents a mixed group. Uh, Latinas would be 100% female. Uh, Latinos could be any number of male and women. Anyway, uh, lactose intolerance affects more African Americans and Latinos than whites. Even the phrase lactose intolerance reflects a cultural bias. A significant percentage of individuals from all communities, with the exception of Scandinavian and Northern European whites, do not retain the enzyme lactase through adulthood. Northern Europeans and Scandinavians developed this enzyme as a response to living in climates hostile to creating sustainable food sources, which compelled them to resort to drinking their herd's milk. I'll stop here to underscore the vitriol she must have against white people. She claims the pastoralists had to resort to drinking milk. And I guess you could say that, but it's a pointedly pejorative way of expressing it. With any other human evolutionary change, a person would typically describe it as an adaptation. They adapted to doing this or that. You wouldn't say that a population resorted to farming because they couldn't hunt and gather well enough. They found a new way of doing things that benefited them. Freeman then goes on to bemoan the USDA's support of the dairy industry, insofar as it apparently pushes saturated fats directly into the mouths of people of color, activating their latent greater potential for heart disease and cancers. I'm not being hyperbolic. She takes the presence of saturated fats in milk extends that to a link between saturated fats and cancers and diseases, folds in, folds in the black and Latino prevalence for this, and then finds a USDA or fast food companies advertising to these demographics, and finally makes the case that these advertisers are scourging people of color with disease. But maybe there's a solution for this. Through legislation, one way to resolve the immediate problem of overconsumption of saturated fats, particularly in fast food mills, would be simply to restrict the amount that restaurants may lawfully serve in their products. This type of regulation would be similar to the limits imposed by New York on the amount of trans fats that restaurants can use. Although it would be desirable to limit saturated fats in restaurant meals, this approach does not resolve the specific problem of the USDA's responsibility for supporting the dairy industry, nor does it respond to the greater issue of food oppression. I guess you could just make those illegal too, why not? I guess that's about all I've got for now. I should probably cut it off before I wax too poetic about the inherently alien activity of milk drinking. So for now, I raise a glass of milk to you and say, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm a power lifter. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people look at me and they want to sort of be like me. They want to be a nasty, fully natural, 100% beast. Tell them, look, step one, go to Kroger, get a gallon of milk. A gallon a day, 